Hey you guys, welcome to one more Reraptor video. Today we will talk a little bit about Octoprint. What you need, how to install, and how to troubleshoot quality issues. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, let me show you our Patreon page. If you like our work and wish to help out, please subscribe our Patreon page. And if you are not a subscriber here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit the little bell so you can be notified every time we publish a new video. So, what is Octoprint? Octoprint is like an interface that you can use to control your printer, send G-code files, monitor the temperatures and much more. And you do it all remotely with your computer or smartphone and is totally free to use. Octoprint has been around for a while now, but for the guys that don't know it yet, here's how it works. First and most important, you will need a Raspberry Pi. There are several models on the market today, such as the Raspberry Pi 2, 3B, 3B+, the 4, and the zero. But the one they recommend to use is the 3B, which is this one. The Pi is sold without an enclosure. You can buy the enclosure or you can download one of the many available online and print it. In our case, we chose this one. The top half has the option to install a fan to cool the microprocessor. If you decide to print this enclosure, place the top cover like this on your slicer for better results. Normally, the Raspberry Pi does not need much cooling. A couple of heat sinks are enough, but if you want to run the Pi in a warm environment, you can get a 5V 40x40 fan and connect it directly to the GPIO pins. The bottom piece has these extra holes and therefore can be secured to the printer, for example. You will also need a power supply for the Pi. Raspberry has the official power supply, which is this one. You can use any power supply, but it needs to be capable of sourcing 5 volts and at least 2.5 amps. To connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer, you will need a USB cable. The connector type on the printer side must match your printer connector. Try and buy a good quality cable. And finally, a micro SD card. A 4 GB card will do just fine, but if you want to capture pictures and video, we recommend at least an 8 GB card. If you plan on making time lapses, or just to see your machine working, you can also get a camera. This is the Raspberry official camera. It is very light and it has an 8 megapixel Sony image sensor. The flat cable that comes with it, it's only 150 mm long, but it's possible to get a 750 mm long one. The connection for the Raspberry camera is near the HDMI connector. USB webcams are also an option. There's a list of webcams that have been tested and known to work. Check the description below for the link. Ok, this is everything you need in terms of hardware. As for the software, you will need to download the Octoprint image and you can also find the link below in the description. You will also need Etcher, which is the software used to transfer the Octopi image to the memory card. Ok, so let's proceed with the installation. Start by inserting the memory card in your computer. Open the Octoprint zip file and extract the image. Next, start the Etcher software. In there, select the Octoprint image file For the destination drive, select your memory card and flash it. When done, don't remove the card just yet. 
If you open File Manager, you will now see a boot partition that was created when flashing the image file. Open it and look for this file. This file contains the Wi-Fi settings, so we need to edit that so that your Pi can get online. Open the file using Notepad++. Normally Windows WordPad messes with these files, so don't use it. Now inside the file, you can find the network settings. If you have a secure Wi-Fi, you need to enter your SSID and password here between the quotes. And uncomment these four lines by removing the first character. If your SSID is hidden, you will need to add this line after the password line and before the bracket. Further down, you need to define which country you are in. Search your country from this list and type in your country code. That hashtag there in the middle of the line, don't remove it. Save and close it. If you have a camera connected, look for the file octopi.txt and open it. This is the file where you set up the camera. The first line here will define which type of camera you have, a USB or a Pi camera. Remove the hashtag to enable that line. For USB cameras, you need to enable this other line here and change the resolution and the frames per second according to the camera you have. The list with all the cameras known to work is a good help to find the best settings. For the Pi Cam, which is the one we have, we use this line here. We're going to change the number of frames per second to 15 and remove the hashtag at the beginning to enable this line. The last two lines are also for the Pi camera. We have to enable them both by removing the hashtags and we have to change them like this. Make sure you don't delete the quotes. OK, save the file and now you can take the memory card out and insert it in the Raspberry Pi. Connect the USB cable to the Pi and to the printer. Now you can turn on the Pi. There is no on and off switch, so it will automatically turn on when you plug in the power supply. Open your internet browser, type octopi.local and hit enter. This should open your octopi window. It might take some time, but if octoprint.local does not work, you can also use the Pi's IP address instead. A good way to know the Pi's IP address is using a software called Angry IP Scanner. I know in advance that my router sets my devices between these addresses, so I type in these here and start the scan. A few seconds later, I can see the Octoprint's IP address and type in that IP address in the internet browser. When entering Octoprint for the first time, you will get a setup wizard that you need to go through first. This startup setup is super easy. The first step is to define your Octopi username and password. These will be requested every time you access Octopi, unless you disable the access control. For safety reasons, we prefer to leave the access control on. Next is the anonymous usage tracking. This basically allows us to choose between sending or not sending anonymous data about our Octopi to the designer so that they can identify problems and fix with future releases. Then is the online connectivity check. Octopi checks from time to time if the connection to the World Wide Web is on and we can define the time interval, the host IP and port. You can leave the default values and move on to the next step. Then we have the plugin blacklist. There are many plugins for Octopi out there, but some of them might cause issues. 
So to avoid that, there is a blacklist that automatically hides them. You can enable the blacklist by selecting the blue button. Next, we have the printer profile. Here you define the basic settings of your printer, such as its name, the form factor, the coordinates origin, if it's equipped with a heat pad or not, the print volume, and so on. Make sure you check all the tabs. When that is done, hit Next, and that's it! Now, you need to establish a connection to the printer. At the left, click on Connect, and after a few seconds, you should now be online. When the connection is established, you will see the word Operational, and you should now have temperature readings on the table and also on the chart. In the control tab, you can access the buttons to move your axis, turn fans on and off, and if you have a camera installed, you can see the image from it. In the G-Code viewer, you can check all the movements the printer will make from the loaded G-Code. In the terminal tab, you can see all the commands being sent to the printer and also what the printer is sending back. You can also send G-Code commands from here. In the time lapse, you can define your capture settings. To start a print, you first upload a new G-Code file and then select Print. You don't need to have the computer on the entire time. The Raspberry Pi is the one taking care of everything. There are many plugins you can install to make your Octoprint experience even better. To explore the plugin list, click on the tool icon at the top. And at the left, select Plugin Manager and then click the Get More button. And here are some of our favorite ones. IP on Connect. This will display the current IP address of your Pi on the printer's display at Power On. Octoprint Print Time Genius. This plugin analyzes your G-codes and learns from them, providing the most accurate estimate print time. Simple Emergency Stop. This will add an emergency button at the top bar. This way you can easily stop the printer at any time. Octoprint Dashboard. This will add a new tab with a much nicer interface. Change filament. This one adds buttons to load and unload filament. You can edit the amount of load and unload and also the speed. Bed level visualizer. This one displays in 3D the mesh of your bed. Heater timeout. This is a nice to have plugin. It basically turns off the heaters if the print doesn't start within a certain time. Octolabs. This is a very cool plugin that allows much more options and controls for time lapse recording. Themify. This will modify your interface appearance with a darker and more comfortable look. 
Octoprint M117 pop-up. Every time your printer displays a message using the M117 command, you will also get a small pop-up message on Octoprint's interface. Octoprint Terminal Commands With this plugin, you can add custom G-code commands. This can be very handy if you know how to use G-code commands for extra tasks. Last but not least, let's talk a little bit about print quality. Printing with Octoprint or without Octoprint is the same in terms of print quality. Printing the same G-code file from the memory card or from Octoprint will produce the same result. There have been some cases where people reported that print quality got worse with Octoprint or noticed some issues or artifacts when printing with Octoprint that didn't had before when printing directly from the printer. Most of these issues are related with the amount of data that is transferred to the printer. By default, most printers have set the buffer size for USB connections too small. So to avoid these issues, we recommend to increase the USB buffer in your firmware. You can also increase the baud rate value in the firmware, but always run a few test prints to confirm that your printer's performance does not change. The best test you can run is to print a circular vase in vase mode. Circular patterns require lots and lots of fast commands. And printing in vase mode will make all the stepper motors turn at the same time along the print. Print the same G-code using the printer's memory card and then using Octoprint. If you see the printer lagging with Octoprint, then you need to tweak the values. If you have time-lapse enabled, some artifacts might come from the retraction when the head moves away to capture a new picture. A good retraction setup must be done to avoid this. If you are not doing time-lapses, just disable this feature. If after all these tweaks, you still see issues with the quality of your prints, then try a different USB cable. A poor quality cable can also slow down the communication between the Pi and the printer and mess with your print quality. And that's it you guys! Do you want to share your experience with Octoprint? Write it down in the comments. Also, if you liked the video, please hit like and if you are not a subscriber yet, go ahead and subscribe our channel. Also, check our Patreon page if you want to help out. Please keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe guys. Bye!